everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so lots going on today. Um, lots to show you, lots of stuff happening here. So I'm going to try and keep my intro short because I don't want this to be a stupendously long video, although you guys say you love it anyway. So let's see where it goes. Um, so before I get started, I wanted to say thank you to everybody who, um, got a chance to join in the live Q&A with myself and Tammy Anderson. We had almost 600 people watching, which was so amazing. Um, for those of you who are in a different time zone and you were sleeping, I'm sorry, um, but you can catch the rerun um, anytime you want on my Facebook, on my Facebook, on my YouTube channel. Um, and we're hoping that this Saturday we will do another one um, but this time it will be on Tammy's channel. So this Saturday night, I believe at eight o'clock, I'll double check with Tammy, but keep your schedule open for this upcoming Saturday. Um, I wanted to say uh, thank you to Roxanne T, Margaret B, Amanda M, Karen D, and Janet K for donating um, through my PayPal link. Um, during the live Q&A. You guys are so generous. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to say with your donations, I was able to buy myself a little Ottoman footstool for my new studio. So um, I'll put a picture of it right here. Beep. Actually, no, you know what? I'm not going to put a picture of it. You guys have seen what my chair is going to look like, the gray solid chair. The rest I'm going to leave it up to a surprise until I get everything and then I will show you guys the setup when it's done. So actually, you know what? I'm not going to show you the ottoman. I'm going to leave that to a surprise. But thank you to you five lovely ladies who donated, which I was able to use that lovely donation to buy myself something from my studio. So thank you so much. Um, I have been working on some resin stuff. Uh, a pyramid mold. I did this cool pyramid and guess what? I don't have it here. It's upstairs sitting on my TV entertainment unit because it's so pretty. Um, but I'll put a picture of it right here. Right there. Look at you. No, isn't he so cute? Um, so that is what I was working on for the last five days uh, in between everything else going on. But I will do a video tutorial on how I did that um, resin pyramid. Um, so if anyone is interested in buying a resin pyramid with custom colors, let me know. You can email me at canalaseraco at gmail.com. Um, Lucas is super excited to have his train table here. We spent pretty much the whole afternoon setting it up, putting the tracks on. I'm helping him record a video of him setting up his table. So I've been pretty busy doing that. Those of you who have been clicking on his um, playlist and letting his videos play in the background while you're cleaning, cooking, chilling, whatever, um, thank you so much for doing that. For those of you who want to do that and help my son with his um, viewing hours on his YouTube channel, you can click the playlist right up here at the top. Just click on it, click play, and let it run. And that helps my son tremendously. So thank you to everyone who's been doing that. Um, oh, and I forgot in the last video to show you guys a close up of the triptych. So I will put that uh, at the end of this video. I will show you guys. I took one of the pieces over to the other side under the pot lights and I did a quick video on how it shimmers and shines now that all three panels are dry. Okay, so today it is resin day. So I am going to be doing a Dutch pour using resin and pigment only. So no acrylic paint in here whatsoever. So what I have here are these uh, eight inch rounds. Now these are from Loli Vefi. Again, you can find these Loli Vefi website. You can save 10% off your entire order on the website using code Canela10. And right now they have these uh, wooden rounds on for 50% off. Not the MDF ones, but the other wood rounds are 50% off. But the last time I checked, you got, might gotta check, they were sold out, but check the website. But anyways, that's where these are from. I've gone ahead and taped the side 
and the back because I want the side to be natural wood when I'm done with this. And so I then I took um, uh, acrylic paint. I actually used just my Artist Loft white acrylic paint and I put three coats of paint on this, believe it or not. You can use gesso, you can use primer, you can use whatever you want. I happen to have the white paint bottle next to me and I did um, three coats of paint, not with a brush, but a roller, okay? I got one of those little foam rollers from the dollar store and I rolled the paint on. It goes on so much quicker and it's fast and it doesn't leave like the brush stroke marks, like if you were to use a paintbrush. All right, so we're gonna do that. And I'm just gonna show you guys the products I'm using today. So I have pigments, pastes, powders from all kinds of different companies. I love them all, I use them all. And there's, I don't have, well, there's favorites and, but there's just so many. So in this box here, I have my crystal resin pigments. So for those of you who wanna start out and try using pigments, this is your most affordable way to start. Um, so you can buy, it's a 24 pack and you get 24 colors. Um, they're not named the colors, they don't have names. So what I've done is I've put them in order of color and then um, I put numbers on them so that I know what color I'm using. So these are my crystal resin pigments. Then I have um, pigments from Baltic Day. So these pigments are also beautiful. And this is the box I have. I'm not going to pull them out. Um, so those are the pigments from Baltic Day. Then I also have pigments from Leslie from Color Arts. So these are resin art pigments. And this one I'm using, one of the colors I'm using is called Purple Sapphire. So I'm using some of Leslie's pigments in my pores, in my pour tonight. Uh, another powder I use is um, from Artie Sue. Now Artie Sue no longer is in business. Um, she decided to move on from the art world and venture into something else from what I, was, I heard last. So unfortunately you cannot get Artie Sue pigments and I have a ton of them and I love them. So unfortunately you can't get those. Then I'll be using some U resin. So these are from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. Artie Sue was also from Australia. You all know resin art is US, Baltic Day is US, Crystal Resin is Canadian. So I have some U resin and this isn't a powder. This is actually a paste. So pastes are wonderful as well to use. So I have that. And then last but not least, I have black diamond pigments. So I've got a full box of a bunch of these colors. There's like, this is here, I'll show you. So this is what the little packet looks like, black diamond. And that's all the colors that's in there. So it's pretty amazing. So these are everything I'm using. At the end of the video, I have taken pictures of all the colors I've used. I cannot possibly list them. So what you see here are six rounds. Guess what? It's rainbow time. So I'm gonna do each round as a Dutch pour, but with the colors of the rainbow. So this round is gonna be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo slash violet, so purple. So that's what I'm doing. Each round has four colors of its own. So at the end of the video, I will show you pictures of all the colors that I used and what company they are from. So when you see this one upside down so that you can see what the name is, just know that it's um, uh, resin art from Color Art, okay? The rest have all their logos and their names on them. So I hope that is helpful for those of you who have pigments, want to try it. For those of you who want to buy pigments and want to try them, these are what I use. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are asking, can you use acrylic paint in resin? Uh, it's not recommended. Um, you can, 
but if you put too much acrylic paint into the resin, you will ruin the resin. It'll change the chemical balance in the resin and you risk your resin not drying properly, drying tacky, sticky, not curing properly. So when you put acrylic paint in resin, you're taking a big risk if you don't know what you're doing. So I advise against it for those of you who are new trying this out, um, I wouldn't do it. If you still want to, you literally have to use like a pinky nail amount of resin of paint. But again, it depends on how much resin you're mixing that into. Okay. Um, oh, I meant to show you. That's why I have this bottle here. So in all my little cups here that you see, I've put the colors in. So for those of you who are wondering how much I put in, I left one little cup empty just for you guys. Now, because I'm only doing one quick little squiggle across, you don't need that much. You do not need very much. Uh, you barely need any resin in these little shot glass or medicine cups, whatever you want to call them. You don't need much because all I'm doing is one quick squiggle across. So basically, I'm going to take just the tip. Can you, can you see that? Just the tip. That's it. You don't need any more than that if all you're doing is one squiggly little line. All right. So that's why this stuff can last you for a super long time, super, super long time. I'll show you one that I did a while ago, like a couple weeks ago. So this is all done just with resin and the pigments. So I did a Dutch pour. You can see the beautiful cells. I just realized I didn't turn my light on. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Let there be light. So, um, yeah, so I did that one. This one is available for purchase. If anyone is interested, I believe it's a 10 inch round. Yep. 10 inch. So that is done with all resin. So I thought I would do a video for you guys to see how you can do a Dutch pour using resin. So all my circles are going to be covered in a white base. You can use Again, as I mentioned, um, your powders, um, you can, as I said, put white acrylic paint, but you have to be careful. I use um, this stuff. Now, this is called Winter White, and it's from my good Canadian friend, Deborah from Resin Pigment Canada. Okay, so she sells this, and this stuff, is great if you want to do an ocean pour and do the ocean and have cells in your ocean pours this white stuff will give you those cells just like you saw in that round i just showed you so you know like i said i could use a white powder i could do that but i like to use this because it's like it said it's called winter white it is white beyond white some white powders will give you like an ivory hue, like a little, you know, tint of ivory. But this winter white stuff is, doesn't get any whiter than that. So, um, and look at all the cells it creates. So this um, bottle is 120 mil and I believe it costs $11 Canadian. All right, so Resin Pigment Canada, you can check that out. I will do my best, try to remember to list this stuff, links or like Resin Pigment Canada in the description below. Okay, I'll do my best on that. So that is what I'm using today. I am going to put you guys on pause. I'm going to mix a ton of resin and I will be back and start pouring with you guys. So for those of you who wanna know how to mix resin, how to get it ready, you can check out my full video tutorial number 227. I will link it up here at the top. That'll show you how I mix my resin. I'm not gonna go through it in this video because then this video is gonna be like really long. What am I at? Almost 15 minutes, okay? So I'm going to put you guys on pause, get everything ready, and I will be right back. All right, so what I'm doing here really quickly is just um, I put, I mixed my resin, I put a little bit of resin in each cup and I'm just mixing all my colors uh, really quick here. And then I'm arranging the way I want to lay them down 
on the panels. So when you're stirring your resin with powder, start off slow or else you're gonna get a powder of pigment up your nose and in your face. So <laughs> stir carefully at first. Once you get it all wet, then you can stir it up. Now, you know, depending on what resin you're using, you have a certain amount of time to work with it. Um, you know, crystal resin, I can probably get about 40 minutes, 45 minutes out of it, and then it starts to get tacky on you. Um, another reason why you shouldn't use um, acrylic paints in your resin is it speeds up the, the um, curing time. So it's going to speed up the process of it hardening. Sorry, the hardening. It's going to start to harden on you a lot quicker um, than if you use pigment. Let's see, what do I want? I want this and this and this and this. As for why I'm putting them in the order I'm putting them in, no particular reason. I just like the way they look this way. I try and, and separate the darks from the lights. So there's no rhyme or reason. If you have two dark colors, two light colors, split them up. All right, now how much resin do I mix? I don't know, couldn't tell you. I just make as much as I think I'm gonna need, plus extra. You're always better off to have extra than not enough because then you have to mix more and that means you're running out of time and the rest of your resin is already curing and you got to mix a fresh batch and that is no good so make extra if you have any extra left over pour it in a silicone mold get yourself some molds pour it in a mold that way you don't waste resin this is going to go on the top then this one then this then this okay here's my cup another thing you see how full this cup is if you let this sit for 10 15 minutes it is going to start to overheat it could start to smoke on you that is a lot of resin and what it's doing is it's curing as it sits there okay so you want to stir it you want to maybe disperse it into smaller cups but if you leave your cup this full with resin it will start to harden it will start to get, the cup will get hot. It'll even melt your plastic cup. So be careful with that. I'm not saying that to scare you guys. I'm saying that so that you guys are aware so that if it happens and you think, oh my gosh, why is my crystal resin or why is my this resin doing that? It's because it's starting the curing process and it is hardening and melting your cup. So please keep that in mind. All right, so you saw me squirt the white in here. I'm going to give it a good shake. Now, please, if you're using resin, please, please, please use a respirator. This is a 3M mask that I got off Amazon, and then you buy the filters on the side extra separately. Please wear a mask. Obviously, I can't wear one right now, because then you guys wouldn't be able to hear me. So please wear a mask. I also have my Dyson purifier on right now. So that is also on and cleaning the air. Okay, as you all know, I use crystal resin. For those of you who want to buy crystal resin off the website, you can save 10%. Why do I keep saying that? 5% using code Canela5. And here is one of the lowly Vefi rounds with it. This is how you get it. All right, lowly Vefi rounds, anything lowly Vefi, you can save 10% lowly Vefi website using code Canela10. All right, I think I've got everything down. I think I have everything ready. I better get moving before I start running out of time. So let's start here. I'm just going to pour, I hope I have enough. See, I have some reserve there on the side, but these are small eight inches. You don't need much, but you also don't wanna not put enough if that even makes sense. So I'm just going to do this. And you need a heat gun. You cannot do this with a hairdryer. 
you need a heat gun. You cannot do this with a torch. You need a heat gun. You can find the heat gun in my Amazon shops and the links listed below in the description of my video. All right, so I'm going to leave not much left, but I'm going to leave some in there. Use your heat gun to heat it up, okay, and get all the air bubbles out. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm constantly moving the gun, okay, warming it up. Popping all the bubbles. Now, until now, I didn't smell anything. Couldn't smell the resin, couldn't smell anything. But now that you've heated it up, you can smell it, okay? So even if a bottle says low odor or no odor or anything like that, believe me when I tell you, there is an odor. Once you put heat to it, it will smell. I don't like the way that looks. So guess what? It needs more. See, this is why you need to make extra resin because you just don't know if you're gonna have enough. I want it to be fully covered. I want it, I don't want to see the wood coming through at all. So I'm going to use my leftover here and yeah, see it's a very thin, very thin layer here and I don't like it. So I'm gonna add a bit more to each one. Just like I said, better too much than not enough. Okay, I'm gonna just reheat. Just moving it down because I'm a goof and I forgot to check if these guys were level. Totally forgot to do that. My bad. Yep, I did. But what are you going to do? Can't check now. Too little, too late. All right. So I'm just going to make sure everything is covered. I don't care about the sides because they're taped, obviously. So I need to work fast because the pigments and these little cups, these little cups too can eventually start to overheat on you if you leave them too long. Okay. Quick, quick. So I've got gloves on, okay. Using your hands with resin is the greatest thing. Let me tell you, you can feel what you're doing. It actually feels really nice on your fingers too. Please, please, please do not touch resin with your bare hands. It is so not good for your skin. It is not good at all. Don't do it. Put some gloves on, okay? Almost done. Then we can get started on the fun stuff. Okay, and then I'm just going across to kind of make sure it's as level and even as possible. See, I'm so glad I added that extra white because now I can't see the board. And this is why it's so important. I don't need my paper towel. Oh, I just noticed I'm not connected to my microphone. <laughs> I hope you guys can still hear me. So sorry about that. I don't, I wonder if that makes a difference. Let me know if that makes a difference now that I have it on my apron here. Okay, so let's start with red real quick. All 
All right, I'm gonna do this as quick as possible. Give it a quick stir before I pour down the colors. And at the end of this video, I'll show you guys how I came about picking the colors that I did. Cause you know, I have a million and one blues, but I only have like four orange colors. So, you know, sometimes it's hard cause you don't have five shades of red that you might like, or, you know, five shades of orange or yellow. And if you do have five shades, they all might look the same, right? Okay, let's go here. I'm moving fast. This is reminding me of when I did those two dragons at the same time way back. Um, and I bit off a lot more than I could chew. <laughs> and I did two dragons, two wooden dragons. And by the time I got to the second one, my resin got so tacky and so slimy, like it was crazy. So that's why I'm trying to do this super quick because it's probably been about half hour since I mixed my resin. And as I said, another reason why you don't want to put acrylic paint in your resin, it will cure it and make it set so much quicker. All right, so please keep that in mind. So if this turns out really well, and I like the results, which I probably will, what do you guys think about me doing another rainbow pour like this on these rounds, but with a black base instead of a white base? So let me know in the comments below what you think. Like, I mean, obviously we'll see how this one turns out, which I think should turn out pretty. But let me know in the comments below if you think I should do this again, but on a black base and see how the colors will pop with black. Because you all know how pretty colors are on black because I did my table, which they're, I'd say about 75% dry now. So I'm really happy about that. I'd say another couple of days and I should be good to go to resin them. So I'm super happy about that. Who is that? Tammy. What's Tammy want? <laughs> Tammy and I talk all day, every day. I kid you not. Um, she's the one person I talk to most in the art community. And she is like such an amazing, amazing person. And if you don't know who Tammy is, I don't know how you don't know who Tammy would be. Um, I will put her link to her channel up above. Uh oh, the doggies are fighting. I can hear them upstairs. So yeah, check out Tammy Anderson. And if you don't know who she is, check out her channel, subscribe to her channel. Um, she's been such an awesome, awesome friend to me. Uh-oh. Juno and Echo are not getting along. Who can hear the doggies? Oh, one more color, one more color. And then the magic happens. Sorry guys for the doggies. All right. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to blow this out and see how this turns out. Now I could put a strip of white across. Um, I didn't do that with the piece that I showed you guys, the completed piece, um, and it worked out pretty well without it. So I probably won't do that. All right, so what you wanna do now is we're gonna take the heat gun and I'm going to give it a quick warm up. You gotta warm it up first and then I'm gonna push it. Then I'm gonna push it, okay? So I'm gonna do that with all of them. Let's go. So first I'm gonna warm it up, pop any bubbles that have surfaced, all right? 
And now I'm gonna push it. Okay, there's one. I really should have checked to see if these guys were level. I'm so disappointed in myself. It's something I do all the time and I can't believe I forgot. Can't believe I forgot. I'm very mad at myself for doing that. Okay. Just bringing it down a bit. There we go. It's so pretty so far. I love the red. There's some air bubbles. So I'm just going to go over it real quick. I'm not pushing it. I'm just going over it. I probably look like a mad woman. All right. Let's blow out the yellow. Okay. Green. Beautiful. down a little bit okay uh, this one's pretty good the red this bugger keeps moving on me oh green what's going on green green's not happy with me okay Moving my yellow down a bit. And my orange. So I'm hoping these don't move, which they might, unfortunately. But. All right. I am going to put you guys on pause and I'm going to bring you guys down for a close up so you guys can see up close what these look like. Be right back. Well, here we are, and I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I don't know what's happening here. Like, um, the red looks pretty. The orange looks pretty. The yellow, very pretty. Green, what happened? I can't figure it out. Um, I tried fixing it. I tried doing another four strips of paint and blew that out. And nope, not happening. Blue, what happened? I, I don't know. I'm pretty disappointed. Clearly. Um, purple, gorgeous, gorgeous. So um, four out of six, I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not happy. And you know what? I'm not about to mix more resin and scrape that off and try it again. So it's not like acrylic paint where you can scrape it off and start again. So unfortunately, um, it is what it is. Um, but I don't get it because look at this. Um, yeah, this turned out amazing. And I did it the exact same way you see in the video. Now, the only thing I can think of um, is it's the wood. Um, so this is, like I said, I put three coats of paint on it. Maybe I should have put primer on it. Maybe I should have put gesso on them instead of the paint. However, I put paint on this um, and this is an MDF wood round. Um, so that could very well, um, be the difference. 
because this is stunning and flawless. Absolutely stunning and flawless and um, I don't really know what's going on. Um, it's breathing. You can see the wood um, breathing underneath because I popped the air bubbles uh, five times already and you can still see bubbles. Can you see them? You see all the bubbles? So this is my bad because I probably should have um, brine them with gesso. I wasn't thinking. Um, I did, like I said, I did the MDF with just paint and obviously it was fine, but this isn't MDF. So it's totally different. So that's my bad. But um, I don't know, once they're dry, um, they will get a top coat of clear resin. Um, and then when they're dry, top coated, and that's dry, I'll show you guys in a future video um, how they turned out. Um, I'm not 100% happy with them. I'm not going to lie to you guys and be like, oh my God, I love it. No, I can't do it. And I won't do it. Um, you know, I, there are people out there who do that. It's that, no, it's not me. Um, if I don't like it, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. And I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh my God, no. And no again. And I like it. Um, but I'm a little disappointed. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh my gosh, Canela, what are you talking about? I love it. Some people might be like, oh my gosh, Canela, you are so right. I don't like it. To each their own. Um, you know, that's totally fine. I totally respect everyone's opinions. It doesn't mean I like completely hate it, but I want to be honest with you guys. I'm not going to lie to you guys and fake my videos and, you know, edit out all the bad stuff, edit out the mistakes, edit out the scrapes, edit, you know, all that stuff out. Nope. I'm true. I'm real. This is what you get. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to show you guys quickly. Guess what? I bought a um, wireless microphone. So soon, excuse my hand in the way, I got to look, see, this is, this is the nonsense I deal with. Look at this. Look, look, you see this nonsense? <laughs> There's, oh, my mic's even, <laughs> my mic's on the floor. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. See? See what happens? Hello. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm just so... I'm just a mess. Anywho, this is what I wanted to show you guys. So, this is where I get my color swatches from. I made all of these. Yes, I literally took every color of every pigment and mixed up resin in little shot glasses just like that and I made color swatches. So I came here, I picked the reds that I wanted, I picked the blues, the purples, all that stuff. So that is how I determined what colors I wanna use. So I've got my crystal resin pigments, I've got my black diamond pigments, I've got my Baltic, uh, Baltic pigments, and then these are my, you know, already sue and all that stuff. So that is what I did and that's how I determined my colors. Now, this is my Dyson air purifier and right now it's on auto. So on auto, it detects how bad the air is. When I turned it on before I started resining, it was at the green line and no air was blowing out of it. Okay, dog hair. Now it's at yellow, which means the um, levels, the purity in the air is no good. Eventually it'll get to the red because it'll still continue to detect the air in here and it will go red. So it is blowing quite a bit uh, and filtering the air. So this thing is one of the greatest things I ever bought. Uh, money well spent. Um, it was about 700 bucks, but... Hey Amen. I, I'd rather be safe and healthy. And so, yes, I have that running every time I do uh, resin. And again, I wear the mask 
Okay, I'm done talking. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, even though it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Either way, do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you kind of on the fence with it, just like I am? Let me know what you guys think. And uh, that's it. I'll put the video of the shimmer of the triptych at the end of this. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye. All right, everybody, so here is one of the canvases dried result. And you can see, I'm trying to do this. I'm gonna put this on Lucas's train table. <laughs> All right, so definitely you can now see the shimmer so then once this gets crystal resin you know how beautiful it's gonna be I'm trying to get my shadow out of here but uh, let's go over this way let's go this way but it dried so well I'm uh, pretty happy with that now you can't see the shimmer on this side. I will move back. <laughs> I love it up here. Look at that. That's so pretty. So there you have it. That is one of the three canvases. Sneak peek at Lucas's train table. <laughs>